Hello, it's James from X-Robots. This is part 25 of the Real Working Exosuit series. Last time we put gearboxes in the arms and today we're going to put some sensing and control in. Yes, that means at the end of this video I should be able to walk around moving my arms and legs. So my arm mechanism consists of this block and tackle here with a pulley and it pulls around these and that means it spreads the load over multiple weak parts which are 3D printed pulleys. What we do need to do though is work out when this string goes slack so all the string doesn't pull off the pulleys when I bend my arm. So that's the first thing that needs to happen and then we need to put some more sensing in the arm so I can actually drive the arm with some sort of switch. So I've designed this little mechanism that sits in between the two uprights there and basically it's sprung in one direction and the string pulls it back the other way. We've got a magnet and a Hall effect sensor mount and that means I can measure the distance. And that means I can run the motor to pull up the slack whenever that string goes slack. Right, so I fitted my little switcher thing there. There's a magnet glued on the inside. The Hall effect sensor's under that red tape. So basically that's the sort of relaxed position at the moment. There will be more weight where the hand gets installed. So it will eventually pull much closer when these strings are tight. And obviously if I move the arm upwards, then that moves away and the Hall effect sensor senses the distance. I'm planning that there'll be some big mechanical hands on the end of the arms, which will of course help tension that string down and help pull the magnet closer to the Hall effect sensor. For now there aren't, so we might put a weight on there just so that works as if there are. But we also need to put some sensing here so I can actually manually drive the arm up and down. Obviously with a big weight hung on here when I'm picking something up, I won't be able to pull this up to make the string slack so the sensing won't work. That's really only for when I'm moving around freely so that it works more dynamically. And to do that, we're going to use another one of these sliders, which are V-wheels on V-slot extrusion, which run really well. And I use those for the other sensors in the feet and so on to tell when I'm walking. So this is going to be mounted like this and it slides up and down. It's going to have a handle on. But what we need to do is make sure that springs in the middle. So I can push it up or I can push it down. But basically it sticks in the middle and that's the off position. And we're going to do that by basically making two little spring things. So this green block on the end is where that slider goes up and down. So our red handle sits in the middle of that square and on the top and the bottom we've got these things which spring up and those are sprung to each other but they've also got end stops so they can't go down any further and that means they'll both be locked down so they're both facing each other they're both locked to each other and that holds the thing in the middle in the middle all the time until I push up or down and then obviously they spring up or down So those are fitted, there's a bit of bungee springing them together in the middle, so they both sprung to each other, but obviously they don't close in any further, and that means that now my slider always centers in the middle. So you can just see the magnet that's placed in there, which slides up and down on the slider, and obviously we're gonna fix Hall effect sensors on the end stops on each direction so I can measure the distance. But wait a minute, it's also got shoulder joints. So I've installed another potentiometer here, which measures that angle, and this has got a bracket to the main piece of the arm, and it's got this little thing that holds the pot. So as I pull the arm forward, actually it rotates the pot. And that means I can unwind this block and tackle with the gearbox at the back as I pull the arm forward. So in fact, the whole thing reaches forward, and that's gonna be the only feedback controlling that motor. Each arm's gonna have its own Arduino and its own battery. And obviously we've got the motor drivers here, the wires coming from that Hall effect sensor, and we need to wire in the pot. That means each arm is independent, and I can just unscrew those and take the arms off, and that means I can transport it in three handy sections. So I've wired in those Hall effect sensors, and the wires from those, the pot and the other tension sensor all come into my analog ins. So I've got a bit of strip board there to make a power rail for the zero and five volts and all the analog ins there populated with the four wires. Around the back, we've now got a USB hub with the three Arduinos plugged in, the mega at the back that controls the legs and one lead each for the Arduino on each arm. And I'm using a USB boost pack here to provide five volts for the logic power. So I also remembered that I needed some feedback pots on the actual elbow joint and that shoulder joint there at least so I can set limits to the motion and we don't go past them, but also so we've got a target to target from the input, which is the sensing, of course. So I've written some code here that reads all of those on the analog ins here, and I've done a little algorithm here, which basically um, zeroes out that wrist, and I've got a value called wrist mix. And what that does is takes the up and the down values for that sensor on my wrist here, the actual um, handhold action, 
and that basically takes one from the other to get the difference so we can see the two numbers in these columns are very similar because the things in the middle but if I push it up we can see one gets bigger and one gets smaller and then we've got that algorithm to actually make sure it's zero which is the fourth column so zero if basically it's above 40 or less than minus 40 so if it's somewhere in the middle there is a little bit of a, a wiggle there otherwise and we get weird results so zero is it out only gives us an actual value, a negative if we push down there, you can see in that fourth column, and positive if we push up. So now I need to get the rest of those analog values and actually make them run the motors in the right direction. So first of all, I've dealt with the elbow joint, and what we're doing here is we've set up servos using the Arduino servo library and attached those to two pins. One is for the shoulder motor, one is for the elbow. We'll deal with the elbow first. So basically, when we write microseconds to that servo, We've got 1500 that's in the middle and the value goes pretty much between 1000 and 2000 that makes the motor run in one one direction or the other so basically i've got my wrist mix which is that slider moving up and down which is zero so it's either a negative or a positive value we've added that to the 1500 so that would simply drive the motor in each direction as we push that slider on the handle at the wrist what we want to do is constrain it so it doesn't run the end stops so what i've done here is said if the elbow joint is a big value 862 and i got that value by moving it to the maximum position then basically we want to constrain that motor so it can only move down it can't go any bigger than 1500 so it only moves in the negative direction and if the value is a small value when the elbow is right down then we can only move up so we can only move up between 1500 and 2000 then we're writing that value out to that servo which we've got the elbow motor attached to and that means we can move the arm up and down but it never runs the end stops so the result of this now is of course as i push down on here the arm goes down and as I push up on here it goes up but it doesn't go anywhere near the gear that's there and it won't go any further than the bottom that stops so um, obviously we're using the Hall effect sensor though to drive that speed so if I push very gently it'll go slowly and if I push really fast it'll go really fast but obviously when I lift this with no load on these strings start to fall off so what we need to do is look at that slackness sensor and build that in as well so all I've done is looked at that tensioner value, said if it's less than a certain value when the string is slack, then basically make that tensioner value 300, which um, gets added to the wrist mix, and to 1500, and that makes the motor run quite fast. And if it's not, then it's zero, which means it doesn't have any effect. Now I tried making this proportional based on the Hall effect sensor and actually taking the difference, uh, but the idler mechanics aren't very good, so it's very jittery, and it's not that great now, but it does pull the string up. So now we have the same functionality for driving the arm with the up and down there, but if I actually lift the arm without pulling that sensor up, we should find it takes the string up. Yeah, it is a bit jittery, but hopefully when there's a load on here, I'll be using that control anyway to bring it up. So even with some hands or a gripper on there, it's not going to rely on that much, but hopefully that just means the strings don't fall off. So now let's look at the shoulder. And what we need to do for that is match one pot against the other. So as we pull the shoulder out here, it actually makes the motor run and it pulls this joint out in this direction so we need to match one against the other and to do that we're using the arduino pid library which will match an input against a set point and give us the output so we've got some things set up here literally the variables here i did through trial and error and it seems to work all right so uh down the bottom basically we've got let's just find the piece of code we've got um basically our input is our actual shoulder joint the set point is the shoulder the top pot basically and i've reversed that by multiplying it by minus one so that it's the same way round because obviously those pots are reversed one being at the top and one being at the bottom and we've done a pid compute and that gives us an output obviously we've got the same constraints here so we can't run past the end stops and then literally i'm writing that out write microseconds to the other motor driver to turn the motor so now the system's trying to match the input of this pot against this pot so it's going to basically drive this pot out to match this position with some gain that we put in our pid controller so as i pull the arm forward we should find that motor unwinds, and if I stop, it stops there. And if I pull it back, it pulls it in. Obviously, we've got that end stop, which is about there, so it won't go any further, so I've got quite a long reach now. But as I pull the arm back in, it winds itself back up again. And obviously, I can stop at any place just by pulling it out a bit and leaving it there, or whatever I want to do.
So that seems to work, but can I walk along in it and move my arms at the same time? No, it's nothing like the wrong trousers actually. It worked 100% well till it didn't work. At least it sounds like an Iron Man suit. So when I said some of the pieces were plastic and they shouldn't be plastic because they weren't really strong enough, that's possibly had an influence on what's happened. So if you remember, I super glued 3D printed T5 pulleys onto the ball screw there, which has been great. Only some of them now aren't gripping anymore, which is why the legs got bent and it can't straighten it anymore and the thing stuck right at the other end. Also the brackets that actually hold the ball screw to the thing that basically pushes the joints. One of those has come out, at least one, and the others have slipped. And that's mainly where the legs malfunctions. Basically the plastic's a bit soft and I can't do the nuts up tight enough to get enough uh, grip there so really some of these pieces should have been metal ideally i'm not saying it's insurmountable with 3d printed parts but it definitely hasn't helped this fell off as well this is the piece that's got the strap attached that pulls forward when you walk forwards um, and basically the screws pulled out of the wood when i tried to walk forwards i'm not sure if that had an influence on it going wrong but it definitely would have done something weird because it's actually pulled the wires off as well which would have probably made one foot get stuck in front of the other foot because there's no input anymore from the Hall Effect Center, which is possibly why the legs all went crooked and it went, hey, it made me fall over backwards. The arms are still working though. Well, I did say in the first place that some of those pieces were temporary plastic and I'd eventually come back and make them out of cnc aluminium, but I can't do that right now, although I am getting some new tools in the channel, which will mean I'll be able to make metal parts. So for now, we've got 25 episodes. We've got an almost pretty much working exosuit that works when it works. So basically, we're going to put this on hold for now. We're going to do a bit more of Robot X. So probably another two to three episodes on that, and then I'm going to publish that project as open source. So I'm not sure how far I'll get with it. I think it'll be to work reasonably well. There's lots of people who've shown an interest in having a go. So that's going to be the plan with that project. Then after that, I think we'll come back to the exosuit and make some replacement pieces out of metal. We love metal. I also really want to do a sort of four-legged walking robot that doesn't have to balance because then I can use metal parts and plastic parts. 3D printing's definitely got its place, of course, in robotics to make something quite good and work out how we do all the maths or all the joints. So that's going to be coming up in the future. We've got the big secret project coming up soon, though, so look out for that. But that's all for now.